Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I'm very thrilled to have this opportunity to talk about secure architecture review of AI-based products and services. Before we begin, let me introduce myself. I am Satish, and I bring over two decades of experience in the field of cybersecurity. As a seasoned security architect with a background in computer science and specialized knowledge in cybersecurity, and cyber law, I have had the privilege of serving as a chapter lead for OWASP Bangalore and CSASFO chapter. This session is designed to accommodate various backgrounds. However, having a basic understanding of Gen AI and large language models is very helpful. Our discussion today is directed at the information security team uh, with a focus on security architects and decision makers responsible for approving AI-based applications post-validation. In this presentation, we will explore the risks, challenges, and strategies for effectively conducting secure architecture review of AI-based products and services. Let's start with a brief overview. Our presentation is organized into five main sections. We will start by understanding the problem and what we are trying to solve. Then we will look at the potential risks or threats related to AI-based applications. Afterwards, we will talk about the main uh, difficulties or challenges we face in securing AI-based applications. Finally, we will share a proposed solution and the approach, and at the end, with our well-considered recommendations for ensuring AI application security. With that, let's start with the introduction. In today's fast-paced uh, business landscape, the demand for AI-based applications, particularly Gen AI, has surged a lot. These applications hold immense potential capable of accelerating processes by up to tenfold. And that's a lot. <laughs> However, they bring with them a substantial risk, the potential leakage of sensitive company information. This risk arises from their unique capability of self-learning. As you know, there are models which self-learn based on the prompts and which can accidentally expose critical data. The core issue we are confronting revolves around this particular dilemma. On one hand, there is a compelling need for AI applications to drive efficiency and innovation. On the other hand, ensuring the security of sensitive data is paramount importance. We find ourselves in a need for a robust evaluation methodology, standards, and processes to safely integrate Gen AI applications into our organizations. Today, we embark on a journey to explore precisely how we can strike the right balance between harnessing the power of AI and safeguarding our vital information. Now let's understand the key difference between Gen AI and AI-based applications. There is a very thin line, but it is very important to understand the differences. Let's understand with respect to the purpose, output, data usage, and application areas. With respect to purpose, AI-based uh, AI applications are, simulates human intelligence for tasks, while Gen AI generates data it was trained on. With respect to output, AI provides logical responses while Gen AI generates novel content. Data usage, AI uses data for decisions while Gen AI can accidentally expose sensitive data. In terms of application areas, AI is used to used in recommendation systems and automation while Gen AI excels in creative tasks like 
text and image generation. Let's understand, explore uh, the different categories of Chennai products and services, which can typically be categorized into three main groups. Consumer model. These are harnessed by third-party Chennai applications, such as browser or email plugins. They aim to elevate user experiences by enhancing various functionalities. We find a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, tools and applications in this area. In fact, the number of uh, reviews or architecture reviews you might get in an organization, uh, this forms a major chunk. So it is very important uh, to understand these consumer models. Next most common is employee model. This category involves the utilization of uh, a private Gen.I models within an organization uh, for its internal purpose. Uh, for instance, organizations employ private GPTs. So this strategy uh, is very uh, secure. In fact, uh, it ensures uh, the data security because it is in your control. It is not a shared LLM. Uh, so the possibility of data leakage is very low. Consumer model. Con uh, consumer model is uh, you as a business uh, want to enhance your product. So you might leverage uh, third-party LLM solutions in your product and uh, uh, provide benefits to your customers. So it involves the development of in-house large language model to provide personalized interactions and solutions. So these are typically three main categories of uh, mod uh, models related to AI and Gen.I based applications commonly used and which uh, you might get for uh, validating before consuming into your organization. Now let's explore uh, our threat landscape. So some uh, potential threats related to AI products and services, uh, it's crucial to be aware of these significant risks. Number one, input manipulation. So picture interacting with a chatbot. If you change your words or ask a tricky question, the chatbot might provide incorrect or even harmful responses. For example, a medical chatbot could misunderstand your health query, leading to incorrect information. Second, let's understand uh, adversarial attack. Consider facial recognition technology by making small changes to your appearance, like adding glasses or makeup. Uh, you could trick the AI into not recognizing you. This could be used for unauthorized access or privacy breaches. Data poisoning risks. This um, threat involves maliciously altering the data used to train AI it can lead uh, to biased predictions or compromised decision-making. Um, that is one more attack called model inversion attack or threat. So here attackers might reverse engineer an AI model to obtain sensitive information, uh, potentially breaching privacy or uh, security. There is one more attack called transfer learning attack or threat in this scenario, an attacker manipulates an AI model by transferring knowledge from one domain to another, potentially causing incorrect or harmful outcomes. To sum it up, um, comprehending these threats is vital when dealing with AI products and services, as they can have significant implications for uh, security, privacy, and data integrity. Staying vigilant and implementing strong security measures is crucial for effective risk mitigation. With that, let's move on to the next slide. So now let's explore some challenges uh, while implementing gen security uh, architecture reviews for gen AI based applications or uh, predominantly any security uh, reviews. 
So um, th th there are many. Uh, we'll talk about three uh, most important or crucial ones. Number one is information leakage. Uh, imagine a Gen AI model trained on a company's financial data. If used carelessly, it might generate reports containing sensitive financial details, risking data exposure. So uh, next concern, next uh, challenge is privacy concerns. Consider an AI-driven uh, healthcare app. It might generate patient diagnosis based on medical records raising privacy concerns about unauthorized access to personal health information. And lastly, the most critical one, legal concerns. I think of legal document generated by an AI. In cases of disputes, questions about who is responsible for errors or misleading content can lead to legal ambiguity. Um, not only this, legal concerns could be could be, uh, I mean, if you try to uh, provide LLM of one company and if you have kind of a shared model, uh, there could be a leakage of information of one of the customers and that could be a severe uh, legal issue. So now uh, let's go to the next slide, which is kind of, uh, which is a solution for uh, architecture reviews. So now that we have a grasp of uh, core problem and uh, identified various threats and we have understanding of uh, what the challenges are, let's explore the solution. We will navigate through a structured methodology and tabletop questions and evaluation framework designed to address these issues effectively. So this slide talks about uh, methodology. The Genai architecture review methodology comprises uh, five key steps, beginning with intake process, followed by threat modeling, then step three, we review security controls, step four, risk severity assessment, and finally, a reporting to stakeholders, ensuring a comprehensive and secure Gen AI deployment. So now let's uh, talk about some of the questions are during our tabletop exercises. These are very crucial and important questions. Um, you might have to, uh, you, you can save them too. Uh, so our tabletop exercise involves questioning Gen AI product vendors or the product um, uh, application who application uh, or the product team. Um, uh, so we inquire about authentication, authorization, bias, mitigation, data privacy, and ethical use. These rigorous and examinations ensures comprehensive security and ethical considerations before integrating Gen AI products and services. So next, um, let's understand briefly uh, how uh, internal architecture of uh, Gen AI applications follow. So internal architecture in Gen AI applications follow a common pattern uh, across three uh, model types, which we discussed earlier, consumer, customer, and employee. So each model consists of three key parts. Uh, so I'm talking about the internal architecture. So it can have a front end, a back end, and the infrastructure. In the front end, we uh, the framework facilitates user interaction, making the application accessible and user friendly. The back end is the engine that powers these applications. It includes a large language model framework like LangChain as well as uh, prominent LLM such as OpenAI and uh, Llama, accessible via API Gateway. The infrastructure is a secure environment uh, where these applications are hosted. Interestingly, a significant majority of application uh, fall into consumer model category. 
uh, this category uh, being the most common. So this is typical uh, technology stack or the internal architecture, how, um, how um, Genai based applications are developed. So by uh, understanding or breaking this down, we, we can, we know where exactly uh, to evaluate. At least it simplifies the problem to a great extent. Now, uh, since we have basic understanding of the internals of the uh, yeah, internals of uh, the Gen AI applications, now let's understand uh, eval evaluation framework for this architecture. So based on the internal architecture we have explored, um, explored, uh, let's delve into the security controls evaluation framework for each component. Uh, rigorous security controls are very essential. In the front end, we meticulously examine critical controls like authentication, access, control, data validation, and response sanitization. Uh, in the back end, we assess the LLM framework and models for safeguarding data privacy, protecting against adversarial attacks, and ensuring the integrity of single tenant models. Finally, the infrastructure undergoes rigorous validation encompassing business continuity planning, disaster recovery, and robust monitoring. This comprehensive framework ensures the security and resilience of Gen AI applications across their entire architecture. Okay, so all these are great information. Now let's put all these things into action. Let's connect all the dots. So I understand um, we had a uh, um, lot of frameworks and other things. Now let's uh, put things together and understand even better. So now it's time to connect all the dots and put our methodology and security evaluation framework into action by performing an end-to-end -end architecture review. This review process comprises of uh, seven key steps. Number one, engagement um, initiation. We initiate the process by um, requesting the product team to submit a review ticket with uh, basic details. This step falls under the responsibility of the product teams. Step two, scoping and information gathering. Here, we engage in a tabletop exercise, a collaborative brainstorming session um, on the application with various stakeholders. We ask questions derived from our earlier questionnaire. Uh, both the product team and the InfoSec team are responsibility during this step. Step three, risk assessment. So this phase involves conducting threat modeling using stride methodology. We create a comprehensive data flow diagram, identify potential threats, identify threat agents, identify uh, or establish trust zones. The InfoSec team leads the step uh, and um, step four is about reporting. In this step, we summarize and prioritize our findings, preparing a report uh, to be shared with stakeholders. Step five, sign off. Based on the findings, we either approve or deny the request. If there are no critical or high severity issues, the request is approved, otherwise it's denied. Step six. In this case, um, where the product team cannot or chooses not to address identified issues, they may opt to accept the associated risk. This triggers the exception or risk management process or the step. So this is very uh, time consuming and not so easy step because it involves approval uh, from C-level individuals within the product team, InfoSec team and governance team. Um, it could be compelling at some time. Uh, it could be compelling. Up. So the final, uh, uh, finally, uh, step seven, once all stakeholders grant approval, the accepted risks are documented and the request is approved for implementation. 
So these are the typical uh, steps which you undergo when you perform security architecture review of Gen AI based applications. Um, uh, I hope uh, still there could be a doubt. Let, let us um, let us make it further more interesting by two cases by solving two cases. So let's delve uh, into our architecture review process with two real world use cases. In the use case one, the product team expressed interest in integrating a Gen AI email plugin designed to assist in email drafting. Following our structured review process, the InfoSec team initiated the engagement by requesting the product team to create a ticket, providing high level information. Next, an insightful tabletop exercise was conducted. And during this exercise, it was revealed that the vendor, vendor's chosen large language model for email plugin uh, was multi-tenant or, or was a shared, shared model. So this lay raised a little bit concerns. But the review continued. Moving forward, a thorough risk assessment was carried out, including the creation of data flow diagrams that identified uh, critical assets, potential threat agents, and trust zones. The resulting report unveiled a, a single critical finding related to the multi-tenant LLM model. This finding had the potential to compromise data security, uh, leading to the decision to deny the request. Oh, that was good. So, uh, so let's further enhance our uh, whatever we have learned by another use case. Uh, this use case, um, one of the product team expressed a desire to integrate a Gen AI private chatbot in their system. Now let's apply our uh, architecture review process and see. Uh, whether this particular request will be approved or not. So during the tabletop exercise, the InfoSec team uncovered crucial insights. It was revealed that the vendor's chosen large language model was uh, for the chatbot was single tenant, which was considered a security advantage. Further, the application had robust input validation and output sanitization measures in place for uh, all the, for the user prompts. And notably, uh, the chatbot integrated filters to detect and mitigate, it, mitigate biases, ensuring data uh, privacy and ethical use. You can't ask for more. So subsequently, the uh, InfoSec team uh, did a, a comprehensive risk assessment uh, along with data flow diagrams and uh, which clearly um, defined assets, potential threat agents and trust zones. The resulting report um, delivered delivered a clean bill of health <laughs> with um, not many critical, uh, with, with in fact zero critical issue or any findings. So, um, so leading to the approval of the product team's request. So this uh, particular review was approved. So uh, I hope you understood um, how to perform secure architecture reviews, what is the uh, a process, and then also we went through these two use cases, which could be very beneficial and easy to understand. With that, let's uh, um, summarize uh, uh, whatever we uh, whatever we discussed until now with the uh, rec with this with the following recommendation so now we have understanding of how to conduct secure architecture reviews for ai based applications so let's talk about uh, talk about uh, the essential controls that every organization should have in place for further to enhance AI adoption. Uh, these are the building blocks of a safe and successful transition to AI technologies, and they will help us protect our 
organization. Number one, number one pillar, uh, infrastructure security. Think of this as the strong foundation of our digital home. Just like we lock our doors and windows to keep our physical space safe, we secure our digital space to protect it from harm. Number two, very important pillar, identify identity and access management. This is like our security team, ensuring uh, only the right people can access our digital assets. It's important because we want to keep our digital uh, rooms locked to unauthorized visitor. Third, data security, which is very core of any uh, securing any applications. Here, our data is like our most valuable treasure. We must shield it from theft or damage, just as we would uh, protect our prized possessions. Then application security, uh, very good application security, uh, security process can secure the home. We just safeguarded our AI. We must safeguard our AI applications to prevent anything harm from getting in. So a very good uh, security program is mandated. Next, let's understand logging. Let next uh, pillar is logging and monitoring. This is our digital watchman. It keeps an eye on things um, that tell us if something unusual is happening. Incident responses, like having uh, a plan for emergencies, we might, we need to know what to do uh, if things go wrong with our AI systems. Lastly, governance. So governance forms, uh, governance, uh, think of this as our rule book for using AI. It tells everyone how to, how we should use AI safely and fairly. By following these, by following these recommendations and focusing on these seven pillars, we are creating a strong shield to protect our organization in the world of AI technology. In today's digital landscape, safeguarding our organization is essential. As we navigate the ever-changing AI landscape, let's stay proactive, vigilant, and secure. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day.